Hello and welcome to the Commodity Trade. I am Piyush Shen and you are watching BTVI. Now, what is actually uh, turning out to be a very interesting trade in the context that perhaps there is uh, some mild recovery in the dollar, though again dollar index actually uh, is not trading or I should say actually is not making strong moves above 90 levels. So perhaps there is one queue again traders are actually uh, waiting by. But then in terms of uh, the domestic queues, rupee again basically extended losses for a third session. Uh, there is weakness broadly across the Asia's and again India is uh, nothing different uh, from it. But still rupee basically is now actually trading at fresh three month lows here. And then what is interesting here is that uh, uh, there is actually a heavy dollar demand uh, from the importers here. There is a perception in the street, uh, on the street that perhaps RBI actually has also intervened in the market here. And also domestic equities basically are helping in capping the rupees fall here. At present 64.78 at one point of time. Uh, we were also trading around 64.89. So there has been some strength perhaps uh, because of some demand from the importers, some intervention from the RBI here. Apart from that, the bond market, the government bond yields have hit a two-year high. In fact, in the U.S. markets also, two-year treasury yields, they actually are at 10-year high. So it's a, in fact a global phenomenon and also the Indian yields actually are doing the same here. 10-year bond yields basically have risen 30 basis points in the start of the year. So it, it appears there are a lot of moving parts here. And then basically uh, what should be interesting here is uh, what is the trend uh, happening on the currency markets. And along with that basically on the commodity markets where again there is uh, there was a slight moderation or slight correction in the oil prices. On the gold again there was a correction primarily because of dollar up move here. And also on the base metals, uh, what appears that copper, nickel, lead, zinc, aluminium basically all actually have eased in the trade today. So uh, now the question here is that uh, where is the trade? Uh, what is the margin of safety in terms of opportunities? Uh, let's put all those questions to our guest today. Pratmesh Malia, the chief analyst, non-agri commodities and currencies at Angel Broking. He joins us live from Mumbai. Pratmesh, firstly, I want to ask you on currencies here. Rupee basically has extended losses for a third straight uh, session. I am seeing that same trend across Asia. Uh, what's the trade right now? And number two, what's your outlook? Uh, are we in a serious uh, concern that perhaps we're going to breach 65 or you think perhaps uh, the damage has been done? Now it's actually worth actually a time to buy rupee. Well, I think, uh, Piyush, uh, the overall sentiment with regards to equities, whether it be domestic or whether it be global, uh, is pessimistic. Uh, so in that sense, uh, rupee uh, uh, depreciation or rupee fall uh, is given. Uh, from here on, I think 65.2 is the key uh, mark that you would watch out for. And if it breaks uh, on, the, on that side, I would uh, not be surprised to see even 65.7. Uh, so the, the major bias would be on the depreciation side. And the second blow would definitely come from a stronger dollar. It's trying to break that $90 mark. And if it breaks at this point in time, again, we're seeing a dollar index moving towards 92, which would give a break for a weaker rupee. Uh, so in that sense, the bias is uh, for the rupee to uh, be on the depreciating side. The question would be that a lot of traders in the Asian markets are buying actually dollar yen put options. That usually is a reflection of the fact that they actually are expecting a pullback in the dollar. Pullback means uh, dollar perhaps there could be some weakness in the dollar, which also means yen perhaps could go up. If that happens, uh, um, do you believe that there is also a risk of some sort of a reversal in the dollar rupee pair? Because you were clearly saying that uh, rupee actually could appreciate significantly. So is there some risk in the trade you are looking uh, in this? Uh, no, Piyush. I think uh, it would better be safe if you be on the buy side in the dollar rupee pair. Uh, I think uh, this time, I think it is headed towards that mark of 65.5 at least. Uh, so I would be a buyer at this particular trade. Uh, uh, and uh, I would really not sell uh, uh, the USTNR pair. I would be on the buy side. In that case, basically, what's the point of reversal? Basically, what would be support uh, on which if actually rupee starts uh, trading higher, uh, this sort of trade actually reverses? Uh, so I think uh, it is, uh, uh, I will give you a particular range. I think you should play out this range, 64.5 on the lower side, 65.2 on the higher side. And this is the range that you can play either uh, uh, side, it's the make or break situation. So you can play this range. If it breaks in 65.2, I think you can go longs. If it comes to around 64.5, I think it would be support zones. Uh, so I think uh, there it would be buy at 64.5, higher at 65.2, sell. Right, so that's the point here, 64.5, if rupee starts trading stronger, uh, basically below this level, dollar rupee, then actually there are trade reverses, but uh, above that, uh, Pratmesh has a very clear view that perhaps rupee could dep depreciate uh, further 
from the current levels here. So far again, there has been some imported demand today. So that actually is the outlook coming on rupee here. Let's now talk about the commodities also where again gold silver actually have showed an interesting move. Uh, Pratmisha, what's happening? Uh, is it more about the nervousness on the dollar here or basically you think uh, that uh, sort of commentary from the Fed uh, minutes meeting here, perhaps that is actually spooking uh, some sort of nervousness on the gold and silver. Uh, what's the strategy, what's the trade and what's the view here? Uh, Piyush, I think uh, whatever you do, you really cannot uh, segregate the uh, dollar uh, from whatever correlation that you can draw for, whether it be equities, whether it be commodities, or whether it be, it be any other asset class. I think it's really the dollar uh, play which is really happening in commodities. I think dollar is really uh, finding a way for correction in commodities. Uh, but uh, given that, uh, given that I would be a, a rather a buy side in gold as well as silver. I think uh, 30,650 uh, and 30,700 is a possible level that you can look for as far as gold is concerned in the Indian markets. And as far as silver goes, 38,500 is the immediate near term targets. So I would be uh, uh, on the buy side for both the metals. And, uh, uh, and this is just a short term play for just for two to three trading sessions. Right, basically, so that's uh, the word coming on gold here. Basically, still the Fed minutes actually are going to be an influential factor and the market basically is watching out for that. There's also going to be a market moving factor for gold and silver both here. Now, in terms of uh, the futures, again, basically, those actually have been trading weaker for gold and silver in the U.S. markets also. Now, on gold and silver, basically, uh, I also want to ask you on the base metals there, but Mesh, uh, what's the view there? And uh, number two is, uh, is there any strong trade which is emerging out on zinc or nickel? Because in the last five sessions, uh, those two metals have been outperforming. Well, I think uh, Piyush, uh, uh, it is really a kind of sideways trade that's happening in metals just for the day if you're talking about. Uh, I think China's leave is something which is really creating uh, silence in all the base metal pack. But if you want to pick a trade in the entire base metal pack, I would uh, probably avoid uh, lead and uh, zinc and nickel. I would uh, bet on copper. I would bet on the po copper for around uh, 6 to 7 rupees move from here on. 462 is the likely target from here on. It's trading at 455. The stock would be around 450. Right, uh, and again, those basically are the views here. And uh, very interestingly, actually, an interesting development. Usually, we don't talk about cobalt here, but then uh, what the interesting development? This is slightly out of uh, the usual setup, uh, which happens. Apple actually is in talks to buy cobalt directly from the miners here. In fact, uh, that also means perhaps uh, because once you talk directly from the producers, usually there is a pressure on the realization, pressure on the prices because direct negotiations always actually yield better realizations uh, for the end users here. Uh, Pratmesh, uh, we don't talk about cobalt normally, but uh, is it a very interesting trend which you just heard of what I was talking? If uh, end users, the large end users, they actually start directly buying from the miners, is it actually something uh, negative, sentimentally negative uh, for the base metals here? Uh, Piyush, I think it is really out of coverage and it would, uh, I, I wouldn't probably comment on cobalt as such because I really don't know the price sense of cobalt. Well, a fair point to say, but yes, uh, for the viewers, again, this is interesting trend uh, which is happening, large end users directly negotiating uh, with the big miners here. Uh, coming back uh, to what we were talking, is there any other uh, trade which you want to uh, spot out in the base metals, uh, perhaps on the long side or short side here? Well, I think uh, the next metal that I would play apart from copper, I would be sell on the nickel side because it really had a, quite a big run up in the past few trading sessions. I think uh, the possible correction for nickel is headed towards 830 markets, currently trading at around 879. So I think uh, uh, correction is due for nickel. It would be probably possibly short nickel. Right, again, so that's the word coming on nickel here because copper where again a good buy call is there and almost uh, another one dollar and, and another basically on M6, another one point and this, uh, the trade will get activated. Uh, so that's the word coming on nickel, copper and zinc here basically. And uh, also another news point before actually we talk on, on the oil also, the Chinese steel producers actually, they basically are eager to unleash uh, their capacity or basically increase in terms of demand outlook as actually the winter curves are going to end next month, which also means uh, more sort of steel exports and more sort of steel production and more demand on the iron ore. So, and also basically nickel is also going to play a part there. So just watch out for that development here. Uh, last question to you, Pratmesh, again, on the oil prices here. What are you watching out uh, and what's a good strategy? Because uh, we have seen some talks in the markets from OPEC that perhaps uh, they're going to meet in June. Uh, OPEC, Russia are going to discuss about the cooperation. Uh, an attempt to boost the market, uh, perhaps, and WTI basically is not showing any signs of exuberance. 
Um, how is it looking like? A range bound trade, weak trade? Uh, what, what is your reading on the oil and gas both? Uh, I think uh, if you're talking about factors that really are in play at current point in time, uh, is really inventories are, are really getting out of out out. I mean, it is really getting consumed. So the two-year overhang of uh, oversupplies and uh, build-up in inventories is really getting consumed. So I wouldn't be bothered uh, for, as far as inventory side is concerned. Uh, but yes, what I'm concerned is about increasing U.S. production, which is really uh, taking a toll on WTI oil prices. So uh, immediate near term, I would play for 60, 70 rupees more uh, uh, on the M6. So while I see a correction uh, in March for possible wherein all the refineries in US and Europe go for maintenance, I think there would be a huge build-up of inventories again, and that is where I think oil prices would correct. So I think the range play would be around 63 on the higher side for WTI, on 58 on the lower side uh, as far as dollar goes. Right. So tactically for us, March uh, could be a month or could be a point of time where actually you will get a sort of uh, short selling opportunity but at present the trade is actually buying that's uh, that's what actually uh, the call was there on your screen so that was about oil prices uh, thanks a lot Pratmesh for all the insights and also what actually are the trading opportunities for today telling us about all of those time for us to slip into